Uh, thank you very much to TEDx for inviting me. They asked me to come and talk under this big theme of the big questions about my life lessons, what I've learned from life. Uh, in 12 minutes, it's going to be a challenge. I asked, I was really nervous about this presentation. I asked a good friend of mine, you know, give me the top five things you should do about speeches. I've got 12 minutes to talk about my life lessons. And they said, every good speech has a running theme, a theme throughout. So I thought long and hard. There was a lot back, backing and forthing. Uh, and I've actually came up with the following theme, which is golf is the game of life. Work with me. Many of you won't know much about golf. Uh, it's a game I grew up with in my family. My father's a golf addict. And the truth about golf is that you have to get that ball from the tee into the hole uh, with as few strokes as possible. And the truth is, so much happens between that tee and that hole. Bear trouble, sand, hitting bad shots, miss hitting, hitting out of bounds. And the truth is the same about life. You're trying to, it's a long journey and trouble comes. It is not if it's going to come, it's just when it's going to come. Therefore, the best golfer is the golfer who gets themselves out of difficulty under pressure in hard times. And the people who do life best are the people who can get themselves out of difficulty under hard times. It is the game of life, absolutely. So we're going to work with that as a theme. Uh, the first word I want to start us off on on my presentation is perspective. I, I, I was a very blessed childhood. I have an Australian mother who I think is in the audience tonight, this morning. And uh, so in my household from very young, <laughs> I had a very interesting perspective. I had a foreign mother uh, living in Barbados, so I already understood that people think different things and have different customs and different things happen. I went to St. Gabriel's Primary School, which was a, a lovely, beautiful childhood. And then, yeah, big up St. Gabriel's crew. Then I went to Queen's College, yeah. My first day of Queen's College, massive more perspective, right? All my life grew up, I didn't really think about race and those things. But the first day of Queen's College, I realized, wait, I'm a red woman. But I never knew that. I went to a school, really, where there were a lot of white kids. So I just really identified in my own mind subconsciously as a black child. Again, first day of Queen's College, it gave me perspective about how people see me. That adds perspective to your life. At 16, I was very lucky to win a scholarship to something called the United World College. In, uh, my, mine was Pearson College in Vancouver Island, uh, a place of international peace and understanding. It was really where most of my perspective, I gained most of my perspective, seeing in a meaningful way. Uh, really quickly, we had a history lesson, really small classes, maybe eight people. My best friend, Samar, was from Palestine, and another girl in the class, Gal, was from Israel. And in this history class, we were talking about the Arab Israeli conflict. So at one stage, we we're talking about this war, and Samar's like, ah, yes, we won that war. And Gal's like, no, 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 we won that war. And after that argument went on for a while, I was like, good Queen's College student, what does it say in the book? Everybody hold up, what does the book say? <laughs> and the truth is, their book said different things. Massive perspective, oh my gosh, there's no truth with a capital T. It is everybody has their own truths, where you come from, you're the, you know, you're the sum of all the influences around you. That was a massive perspective for me. How's my time going? Everything going well? Good. <laughs> The next word I wanted to use, I mean, I have so many stories, but no time. The next, the natural lesson from perspective for me is tolerance. Uh, tolerance is a huge, oh, sorry, wait, 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 wait. Perspective in golf. When things go wrong on your first hole, you have 18 more. So we bring back to the theme, golf is a game of life. Next thing is tolerance. Um, I love this picture. Being tolerant, I think, yes, is a natural lesson from perspective. Uh, Gandhi, a, a great hero of mine, he taught the moral lesson, be the change you want to see in the world. But growing up, I realized that more than a moral lesson, it is a thinking person's lesson. Even if you can't find the compassion in your heart to care about the beggar on the street, you have to know intellectually that they've had a different life from you. Their reactions, the way they behave is going to be different. On a golf course, if you do not have tolerance, you are nothing because you're going to make errors. It's a very tough game. You know, every time you play it, you're like, Wait, I, I thought I was a good player. Oh, turns out I'm not. To having tolerance for yourself and for your errors and for your mistakes is the only way to continue. Uh, my next word is Rastaman vibration positive. Irie Ites, my Australian grandmother, Grandma Doris, rest her soul, used to say it's very easy to smile. My mother raised me, my brother and sister, very insistently on the importance of keeping a pleasant look on your face. Uh, the non-verbal communication in life, I think, is as important as the verbal. And you, you know I'm verbal. Uh, in golf, the same thing. If you don't stay positive, you have no chance. Because when things go wrong, you have to maintain this, this sense of, you know what, I, I can do it. I can do it. Just switch it. The only way to play a good round of golf is to stay positive, you know? Especially if you've played a bad shot before, and then you go to putt. You know the putt on the putting green? If you line up the putt, 
if you think about the distance, once you get over that part, you have to be positive or you won't make it. It's a fact. The next, that leads us nicely into my next slide, which is uh, the secret. If we can just get there. There we are. I think very naturally I, I, I lived a, a fairly positive life. But this book, I don't know if you all heard about it, 19 million people bought it. It, uh, it was translated into 44 different languages. Get your hands on it and read it if you can. But the basic premise is that being positive in life brings you success. Duh. <laughs> it brings you sort of wealth and personal happiness. And I found that I, I experienced a lot of that in my life. At 24 years old, I had my first job at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And I told my mother, boy, I ain't sure about this for the rest of my life, boy. And she encouraged me to go off and seek my own fortune. So I resigned from my job, I sold my car, and I took my life savings. And I bought a Euro rail pass, a three-month pass across Europe. I started in Stockholm, Sweden, by a friend of mine. And the first week, he took me to play golf. See this theme coming? Anyway, there were only two of us. And as customary on a golf course, they paired us up with another two. One of these guys was a Dutch horse breeder living in Stockholm. So he says, um, Alex, are you going to go to Amsterdam on your European trail? <laughs> Am I going to Amsterdam? Correct is right. So he said, out of his pocket, he produces these keys. I live in Sweden, but listen, my house is there, empty. Here are the keys. Here are my friend's numbers. Go off and enjoy yourself. Well, I said, what? Uh, off I went. I had a phenomenal time. Actually, even when I went on traveling further in Europe, I would meet friends and say, wait, y'all been to Amsterdam yet? I, I got a house in Amsterdam, you know. <laughs> the, the, the truth is, it is fairly risky, right? But much like golf, I, I believe life is about calculated risk. Even if, God forbid, things had gone wrong, because he could have been like, yeah, man, I got to line up. <laughs> Let me make it happen. <laughs> uh, he didn't, thankfully. But even if he had, I don't think it should stop us from living life with calculated risk. Daring. Daring. You have to dare. Um, on from the secret, they also asked me to speak about being a woman in entertainment, and I want to speak on beauty. On this note, I'm going to take off these shoes and put on my slippers. I am a big believer, and I believed it even before I was in entertainment, that you know, the pressure is much more on women to look beautiful. There is this obsession with how women look. If they're slim enough, if they're wearing the right things, if they've got makeup, look good, how the hair look. And I grew up really defining myself against that anti-fashion. My mother gets horrified that I have on slippers with dresses all the time. I don't believe in it. I think I should be as valuable to you in these slippers as I was in those high heels. Yeah. Um, there's a Russian author by the name of Tolstoy who said, and listen to this quote, I if I was better with my presentation like the chef, I would have it here. Um, <laughs> it is amazing how complete is the delusion that beauty is goodness. It is amazing how complete is the delusion that beauty is goodness. They are different things. To bring them back to my golf examples, a woman called Annika Sorenstam was one of the best golfers in the world. But you're more likely to have heard of Michelle Wee, because she's beautiful. If anybody knows anything about tennis, Anna Kornikova did not have a career. Look good. Art in. Uh, that was a massive lesson I learned in my mid-twenties. To be more than my sex. To be more than my gender. Actually, this, my mother always tells me, when people tell you you're beautiful, don't, don't say thanks. So as your parents, you have no play in that. The truth is, what, what you need to do is, is develop your character so that when the looks fade, and they will, I'm 36 years old, let's be honest, I'm not getting younger. My, my value and my beauty is my character, who I am, more than my legs and my, you know, my fat belly and things. The last point I want to make, how am I doing for time? But yeah, wicked. Um, the last point I want to make is about discipline. I can slow down now. Whew. Honestly, I did this this morning, it was like 20 minutes. I was like, oh no! Discipline, and I like this particular slide. If you can look at all the things involved in there. Being from a place where the word discipline has a bad connotation, because we beat, we actually flog people, how ridiculous. Uh, that's, that's another speech for another time. I mean actually self-discipline. The idea of stickability, trying to do something every day, remembering to do it. Now, as a child, I um, was very gifted at academics and sports. I didn't struggle, so I never learned discipline as a child. I used to like school and like sports, and I got through. It was later on, maybe a little after y'all's age, when I started to discover boys and drinking and warehouse, that discipline became a little more difficult. <laughs> discipline was much harder all of a sudden. And I, in my adult life now, I have to say, I've turned to the discipline of yoga to help me with this. The idea of steadfastness, of even when things are hard or you're tired of doing something, actually knowing you have to do it and doing it every day or every other day. You see, the man talked about the 30-day challenge earlier. I thought it was a very interesting lesson. Discipline, practice, and steadfastness. 
Some days it's horrible, but it will totally be valuable for you in your life. Uh, golf, again, nothing without discipline. You have four hours to stay concentrated over 18 holes. With discipline, you're nothing. Um, in summation, a few things. I think that luck in life, you, you're born with certain things in life. I was born extremely lucky with wonderful parents in a wonderful home, with great schooling, super older brother and sister. So I was hanging out with people older than me from younger. I felt like I had all the breaks in life. But I think it's also true even when you don't get breaks that you, you play a hand in creating your own luck. I want to tell you a quick story about when I moved to London. Uh, I left this job, like I told you all, in Ministry of Foreign Affairs and good Barbadians. Were you crazy? You're leaving a government job? Were you mad? But she mad anyway. I knew she was mad from school days. That's the thing. Uh, that, that mad Alex, that was my nickname. Off I went, and after I traveled Europe, I moved to London to try to become a presenter. I was working late in bars, and nothing was working. I wasn't getting any, any breaks in life. One Notting Hill Carnival day, now I woke up early, fired about four rums. So yeah, I hid in the road, ready for the road. And I got on the road, jumping up. Carnival is my thing. And I saw in the distance Peter C. from Ecstatic Family coming towards me. They had some documentary going on, and he came to me and said, so how are you enjoying Carnival? So, you know, my, I'm very confident. I'm feeling very good at this stage. So I grabbed the mic and said, oh, thanks. Hi, I'm Alex Jordan. Welcome to Notting Hill Carnival. Let me tell you a bit about the city. <laughs> and, anyway, long story short or whatever, um, a lot of my, my presentation made the final clip. A year and some months afterwards, I got a phone call and said, hi, is this Alex Jordan? I said, yeah, it's the BBC. I said, uh, hi. I said, yeah, my boss, he went to Trinidad Carnival. Uh, he saw this thing and he said, this girl lives in London. Can you find her? We want her to front our soca music show. Right, the only international soca music show in the UK at the time. And I thought to myself, if that's not the secret, there's nothing. Right? Daring to be yourself, daring to be good at what you're good. Not necessarily maths or science. You don't see Bajan Farai. Look at what he's, he's good at being himself. Uh, I think that's a massive lesson. The other thing in, in summation, it's okay to be an oddball. It's okay not to be like everybody else. That's a massive hard thing in school. Because you want to be like your friends. Or you, you don't want to stand out. I, I encourage you to stand out. I encourage you to stand out, you know? I, I think it's, it's a wonderful thing. Uh, even if you're not as competitive as I am, and you can see I'm, I'm a competitor, I, I, I like to do better and like to win. Even if you're not as competitive as I am, do like in the game of golf, play against yourself. S judge yourself by your self standards. So be better, than the be better today than the person you were yesterday. Um, read lots, eat well, think sustainably. Be tolerant and be thoughtful. You'll have a wonderful life. Thank you, guys. Thank you, TEDx.